Hi everyone! Welcome to the Unit 1 of our module, Introduction to Philippine Traditional Games. So first, let's have the overview of our unit. Before PSP, cell phone, personal computers, laptop, and other electronic gadgets, children used to play outside their houses by simply tagging or yung tinatawag nating taya-tayaan, clapping their hands while singing Nanay, Tatay, Bahay Kubo, and other songs. Some are playing by just uh, throwing and hitting stones, sticks, marbles, and slippers. And some played by simply jumping over, climbing, running, and some are playing hide and seek or yung tinatawag nating tagu-taguan. So, what is traditional games? Traditional Filipino games or indigenous games in the Philippines or yung tinatawag nating laro ng lahi sa Tagalog it are games commonly played by children. Usually, they use native materials or instru instruments. Dito sa Pilipinas, due to limited resources uh, of toys for our Filipino children, they invented games without the need of any materials or equipments but the player themselves. Halimbawa na nga lang nito is yung patintero. Ang kailangan mo lang is ay mga players. Hindi mo kailangan gumamit ng any, any materials. Basta merong mga players is malalaro mo na ang larong patintero. Their game complexity arises from the flexibility to think and act. According to Carmen M., Jano F., Morales, MPE, and Ole 2015, promoting physics in action through laro ng lahi base, physics activities, is one way to describe the relationship of physics in science to the physical education subjects. This laro ng lahi is the most substantial proof of it. And also, according to the International Journal of Learning and Teaching, traditional games known as Laro ng Lahi are described as compilation, compilation of traditional games practiced in the Philippines. Ito na nga yung uh, mga kadang-kadang, patintero, at iba pang tinatawag nating Laro ng Lahi. The term Laro ng Lahi was coined by Samahang Makasini Artist Club Incorporation. According to Aguado 2012, these games are indigenous games commonly played by Filipinos, uh, Filipino children where they use locally available materials or instruments. So here are some uh, common laro ng lahi or traditional games that children usually play during their free time uh, or festival or town fiestas. Some of the examples are duck on a rock game or yung tinatawag nating tumbang preso or minsan tinatawag din nating paway lata, block the enemy game or yung tinatawag nating patintero, gili danda, shato, leaf frog, luksong baka, tag of war or, or yung hilahang lubed, rubber band games or yung example nito is yung dampa. Ito yung tinatawag nating mga laste. And marble games, o oh, yung tinatawag nating Holen. According to Lopez, 1980, laro is the Filipino generic term for all forms of recreational play. And it was further classified by Barbosa 2003, wherein the closest term for the word game is Palaro, referring to special occasion games that take place during uh, parties, festivals, and town fiestas. Lahat naman tayo familiar sa word na palaro, na every time na may fiesta, every time na may halimbawa pa birthday, pag sinabing pa, uh, mayroong palaro, mayroong, competi mayroong mangyayaring competition at mayroong premyo. Lopez 2001 recounted that Filipinos like to play games and it is a trait considered as an index of their sociability. 
every time na may palaro, kahit hindi tayo magkakakilala, nagkakaroon tayo ng social, ah, nagkakaroon ng socialization. At nagkakaroon ng band. Traditional games bind the members of the families together after a respective chores. Halimbawa na lamang, kung after nung mga uh, gawaing bahay nyo is maglalaro kayo ng songkat. It strengthens the binds and ties of the family. Mas pinapatibay pa nito yung samahan ng pamilya kasi nagkakaroon ng socialization, nag-e-enjoy kayo at nagkakasundo kayo sa isang bagay. While in adult education, as cited by Fiagoy 2000, the use of games for contextualized practice within the people's culture and experiences. In the education field, traditional or indigenous games are identified as modes to acquire proper sport techniques in preparation for greater, greater or competitive participation in selected sports and recreational activities. Historically, traditional games in the Philippines were integrated with physical education, courses in all levels of educational institution and sports activities of the local government units. Through Senate Bill 1108 or 1108 and House Bill 2675 in the account of Wilhelmsen 2012, these games comprise the major components of physical education curriculum through the efforts of the Bureau of Physical Education at School Sports BPESS done in 1984. Good day everyone, I'm Sharmika Aganab from the Pet 3D and I will be continuing the report of Ms. Marielle Combis. The 1987 Philippine Constitution was supported by the efforts of Bureau of Physical Education and Social Sports or BPESS. Nangyari ito noong 1984. And this constitution mandating that they must preserve or conserve the traditional games. Ang Department of Education ay nag-implement ng Section 14, Article 14 of 1987 Constitution na siya nagsasaad na dapat panatilihin ang Filipino natural culture sa pamamagitan ng pagpapakilala ng laro ng lahi sa physical education curricula. The Filipino traditional games is na-adapt natin sa ibang kultu kultura ng ibang bansa. And some of this is a pre-Hispanic origin na kung saan is nag-unique itong larong Filipino traditional games. Ang Pilipino ay kilala bilang isang sports-loving people and sila ay mga creative pagdating sa iba't ibang aspeto ng buhay. And yung traditional games ay talagang nasa passion na ng mga Pilipino na kung saan nagpapatuloy ang mga larong traditional hanggang ngayon sa kasalukuyan. Ang sungka, dama, or patintero ay unti-unting hindi nagiging popular sa mga kabataan ngayon. And yung ibang traditional games ng Pilipinas, kagaya ng yoyo, sipa, arnis, ay nagiging popular sa ibang bansa, na kung saan sa atin nila na-adapt yung larong iyon. And sa bansa nila, nagiging popular, ngunit sa ating bansa ay nakakalimutan na ang mga larong ito. And nagiging history na lang siya kasi hindi na ipapakilala sa ibang kabataan yung mga traditional games na nilalaro dati ng ating mga minuno. And all those traditional games should give importance kasi isa na din siyang kayamanan ng ating bansa. Dahil hindi lang naman enjoyment ang kayang ibigay ng traditional games kundi Tinuturuan ka din magkaroon ng sportmanship or nade-develop ang camaraderie and also honesty. Babanggitin ko yung mga iba't ibang uri ng traditional games like agawang sulok, araw lilim, arnis, aso at pusa, bulong pari, 
bunong braso, dama, garter, hulaan, holen, iring-iring, istatwa, jack and poi, jackstone, kapit bakod, laglag panyo, lawin at sisiu, luksong baka, luksong tinik. Luksong lubid. Palo sebo, akong saan kadalasan nilalaro sa mga piyesta. Patentero, piko, pitik bulag, saranggolahan, and mostly, mas popular yung saranggola pag mahangin ang panahon. Sipa, siklot, siksik bulak, sungka, suot lungga, Taguan, and best na nilalaro ang taguan, paggabi. Takip silin, tatsing, tumbang preso, turumpo, viola, yoyo, and such others. Ito yung mga iba't ibang uri ng mga traditional games but hindi ko na nilahat yung pictures. na siyang makikita natin na nilalaro sa iba't ibang lokalidad ng Pilipinas, especially sa mga probinsya. According to Fine 1995, believe that these native games can be threads that can be a learning or may apply nila sa totoong buhay. Ayon naman sa Carmen et al. 2015 na ang interconnection of the games and real life situation ay naikukumpara sa holistic learning. On February 10, 1984, ito yung kauna-unang nilunch ang palaro ng lahi na kung saan ito ay ginanap sa Lawag, Ilocos Norte with combined efforts of MES Office of the Provincial Governor and Office of the Municipal Mayor. And yung laro ng lahi is become as an activity in the physical education according to Waterhouse 2009. According to D.K. Aguado, As an executive director of Magna Cultura Foundation, a Philippine NGO for Arts and Culture, Sinasabi niya na ang traditional games are very much alive in the Philippines. Ibig sabihin, buhay na buhay pa rin ang mga traditional games sa Pilipinas. Even may nagsasabi na nakakalimutan na ang mga traditional games, may mga kabataan pa rin na pinipiling laruin ito kaysa malibang sila sa mga computers or technology kagaya ng mga cellphone, laptop, or any games na makikita sa cellphone. Patintero, tumbang preso, piko, sipa o turumpo are still played lalong-lalo na sa mga probinsya. Kadalasan mo makikita yan sa mga kabataan na mahilig pa rin maglaro dyan sa mga lansangan. Kaya lang naman nakakalimutan yung ibang traditional games dahil sa mga western games kagaya ng basketball and volleyball. Filipino street games should be organized para sa mga kabataan na siyang ma-adapt nila ay yung mga traditional, not the modern games. Kasi mas maganda pa rin yung mga traditional games kasi na-develop yung sportmanship at may communication yung ang bawat maglalaro. Araw lili, ito ay isang laro na kung saan ay kinakailangan ng sikat ng araw at lugar na may lili. Ito ang dapat malaman sa paglalaro ng araw lili. Una, alamin muna kung sino ang magiging taya sa pamamagitan ng maiba taya. Pangalawa, magsisimula na ang laro kapag ginahabol na ng taya ang kanyang mga kalaro. Pangatlo, Ang maaari lang mataya ay kung sino lang ang nasa ilalim ng araw at wala sa lilim. At panghuli ay tandaan ito na ang maaaring naruin ng tatlo o higit pa sa limang manlalaro. Bahay-bahayan 
Ang larong ito ay isang paraan ng pag-aaral sa totoong buhay na may isang pamilya o mag-anak. Ito ang mga kailangan malaman sa paglalaro ng bahay-bahayan. Ito ay nilalaro ng apat o hanggang limang bata o higit pa, na kung saan ay ginagampanan ng mga manlalaro na ang katayuan ng bawat membro ng pamilya, nanay, tatay, anak at iba pa. Pinapakita sa paglalaro ang mga gawain sa bahay tulad ng paglilinis ng bahay, pagluluto ng pagkain, pagtulog at iba pa. Ang bahay ay binubuo ng konting kumot, higaan at iba't ibang laruan. Depende sa gusto ng mga manlalaro. Ito ay maaaring laruin sa loob ng tahanan o kahit sa labas. Good day, I am Lee Justin Apolinario from Biped 3D. In this video presentation, I will presenting two of our traditional games or laro ng lahi. First traditional game was called Bolong Pari or Whisper It to the Priest. Here are the mechanics. The players are divided into two teams with an equal number of members. One player is chosen to be the priest and two others to be the leader of team A and B. The leader should stand on the head of both lines. The teams are standing parallel line facing each other. The priest will stand or sit in front of the teams in about 5 meters. The leader of team A goes to the priest and whisper one of the names from team B. Then he returns to his place and the priest calls out lapid or approach. One of the players of team B approaches him. If it happens to be the player who the leader of team A mentioned, the priest says bang. Then he falls out of the line and stays somewhere near the priest as a prisoner. If he is not one who was mentioned, he is allowed to approach. He whispered to the priest the name of one of the players of team A. The game thus continues and the team which has no players left is the loser. To know who will take first, both leaders will play jack and poi so there's no bias at all. The winner on Jack and Poi will be the Team A that is first in the game. Let the game begin. Lara. Bang! Lapit! Lapit! Lapet! 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 Bang! <laughs> if the team has no player, it means that they are the losing team and the penalty for losing team is they will carry one player from the winning team. The next game is called Chinese Garter. This game needs to be physically fit. For this will be test your stamina, agility, and your jumping skills. The mechanics of the game. Before the game starts, you will be need a rubber band, garter, or rope whichever you prefer and as long how the length you will be using to play the game two teams are required with two or more players although you can still play with only three players two holding the rope and one jumping on it the holder will stand facing each other at both ends with the garter stretched horizontally around two to three yards or seven feet long looped around their body. The player should be able to jump or cross over the garter without tripping.
failure to do so will get you or your team eliminated and make you the one holding the garter as the other player takes your turn in jumping. The players may be decided the levels of their games. Generally, the garter starts from the ankle level, next is the middle of the leg, knee, hips, waist, chest, shoulder, head, tip of the head, inches above the head, and last level is that the garter will held up with raised arms. Every challenger must be careful not to commit any mistakes during their game or else her turn is over. That's all for today. Thank you all for watching. Good day, I'm Junishi Iprilin from Iped 3D and I'm going to discuss to you the continuation of traditional Filipino games which is Declan Ruki and Hand Clapping. But first, let's talk about the Declan Ruki. Declan Ruki has a quotation of I declare do it. So, participants are told to do something by the winner in the previous game and it is similar to the western game called Simon Say. It is a children game that has a three or more players and one player takes the role as a Simon which is the winner who has a the, the privilege to command in the part, other participant. So to start the game, Simon which is the winner will give an instructions to the other participant Usually, the command is about physical actions like jumping, running, walking, and others that involves actions, which you should follow only when you hear the praise Simon says. So, kapag hindi mo narinig yung praise ni Simon says and binagbigay ng instructions or command, that is what we call fake command. And also, players are eliminated from the games by either following instructions that are not immediately preceded by the phrase or failing to follow the instructions which does include the phrase Simon Say. So, sa laro ng Clan Rookie, yung winner is magbibigay siya ng instructions para sa mga participant. And yung participant, bago nila sundin yung command na instructor, is kailangan muna nila marinig yung phrase na Simon say bago nila sundin yung command and nagkakaroon na elimination kapag yung isang participant is ginawa na kaagad yung instructions kahit hindi pa naririnig yung praise or yung participant hindi niya na uh, nagawa maayos yung instructions kaya nagkakaroon na elimination sa isang laro it is the ability to distinguish between real and fake command so, madidistinguish mo lang kung ano yung real and fake command kapag narinig mo yung phrase. Pagka ginamitan ng phrase yung isang command, that is real command. Pag hindi mo narinig yung phrase sa isang command, tinatawag itong fake command. The object for the players acting as Simon is to get all the other players out as quickly as possible. The winners is usually the last players who has successfully followed all the given commands. However, if two or more of the last player of the game are eliminated at the same time, the tendency or the result is Simon will still be the winner. Hand clapping games. A hand clapping game is generally involving four people. They are split into two pairs with each pair facing each other. Members from both pairs face the center, the two pairs being perpendicular to each other. Each pair then does a hand clapping routine while singing the Bahay Kubo or Leron Leron Sinta. In the middle of the song, each pair will exchange routine with the others. So as you can see, this is the example of hand clapping games. It has a four members split into two pairs. 
Each pair then does a hand clapping routine while singing the Leron Leron Sinta. In the middle of the song, each pair will exchange routine with the others. Magandang araw sa lahat. Ako nga pala si John Kenneth Vicente from Biped 3D. Ito ay karugtong ng report ni Miss April and Junisha sa hand clapping na kung saan ang examples doon ay Leron Leron Sinta at Bahay Kubo. Leron Leron Sinta Leron Leron Sinta Ang Leron Leron Sinta ay karugtong lamang ng report ni Miss Aprilin Junisio sa kanyang report na hand clapping dahil ito ay kasama sa examples niya na ang Leron Leron Sinta at Bahay Kubo ay iisa lamang ng mechanics na kung saan ay nilalaro ng apat na katao Ito din ay inaawit o nilalaro sa tahanan sa eskwelahan or mapalansangan. Ito ay binubuo ng apat na tao upang makalaro at makagawa ng isang laro na para sa lahat. Ito ay binubuo o nabubuo ang sportsmanship, leadership, collaboration, friendship at kamaradri. Tang nena, nagsimula ang laron-laron sinta noong naipanganak si nena. Ito ay patungkol kay nena simula pagkatanda Pagkaisang dalaga hanggang sa pagkakaroon niya ng asawa at pagkakaroon niya ng mga anak at hanggang sa pagtanda at hanggang sa pagkamatay niya. Ang larong 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 sinta sa kaduluhan o katatapusan ay may isang manlalaro na mag-aak o mag-aarte ng isang multo o pagiging multo dahil para makuha niya ang mga makuha niya o mataya ang ibang manlalaro. Ang sumunod ay Bahay Kubo. Bahay Kubo. Ito ay isang tanyag at kilalang kanta o laro ng bawat isa. Mapabata, matanda at mapaporin people sa panahon ngayon. Ang Bahay Kubo ay binubuo ng apat na katao na hinahati sa dalawa upang malaro ito. Ang mga miyembro ay dapat magkaharap sa unang palakpak. Sa pangalawang palakpak naman ay sa kanan o sa kaliwa o kahit sa nila gustong magsimula. Sa pangtatlo ay ganun din, sa kanan o sa kaliwa o kahit sa nila gustong magsimula. Sa ikatatlo naman ay sa harap at ang panghuli ay sa ibaba. Ang larong bahay kubo ay kadalasang nilalaro sa eskwelahan, sa tahanan at sa lansangan. Ang mga miyembrong matatalo ay may puntos o kalakip na puntos o taya na tinatawag sa karamihan. Ang bahay kubo ay isang masayang laro at nakakainganyo para sa lahat. Panoorin at tingnan natin kung paano laruin ang bahay kubo. Ay sari sari sinkamas at talong si Darius sa mani si Tao ba Tao pa tani kundol pa tola upot kalabasa at sa kamerun ka laban ng kustas si Buyas kamatis bawang at luya sa paligid ligid ay puno ng mga Good day everyone, I'm Lester Valentino from Pipit 2D and now I'm going to explain the mechanics of Agawan Base and Sekyu Base is one of the traditional Filipino games and how to play these two games. Agawan Base, it or Tiger, stands in the middle of the ground. The players in the corners will try to exchange places by running from one base to another. It should try to secure a corner or base by rushing to any of those when it is vacant. This is called Agawan Sulok in some variant and Bilaran in other. Agawan Base Agawan Base literally means capturing base. It is played by two teams with a minimum of three players for each team. The more players, the merrier. This play usually play on the beach since this game involves running, chasing, or tagging, and accidental falling is inevitable. 
Agawan base can be play together by children and adults. Agawan base mechanics. There are two bases. Each base has equal number of members. There will be one of person assigned to guard the base. The other may leave the base to run and try to catch another members of the other team or to try to steal the opponent base. First, magkukumpiyang ang manlaro upang maagawa ng team. Ang bawat team ay kailangan maapunta sa mga base ng alaban upang sila ay manalo. Ang bawat team ay kailangan nilang maagaw ang base ng kalaban. Meron isa sa isang team na magpapahabol upang ang nahahabol sa kanya ay masalat ng kanyang kasangga. Kapag may nabihag na sa kalaban, ang goal na ng kalaban is masalat ang kanilang kasangga upang maabalik ito sa base. At kapag nabihag naman lahat ng kalaban or nataya, it means panalo na ang isang team. Secure base is another form of pagawan base which is one of the old style diversion in the Philippines. It is exceptionally well known from the previous 2 to 3 decades. This amusement is like a gawan base aside from the reason that it has no score constraint. It is a sort protection or warlike diversion which needs player with dexterity and speed.